cheating fiancé tried telling me that her affair was just a test, so I said goodbye and walked out. Let me start from the beginning here. Yesterday I met my fiancé at our wedding venue for our four-month out meeting to finalize details. We drove to the venue separately because she was leaving straight from work. Towards the end of the meeting she let me know her friend was dropping off her rental car and needed a ride home and asked if it would be okay. I said yes thinking nothing of it as it wasn't that far from our home and I know her friend well. I get home and tried to get in touch w her for the next three hours. No answer. At approx the 1, 30 mark I texted her friend and asked if she had made it to her okay. I was very worried. My fiancé ends up coming home and says sorry it took longer than expected she hung out with her friend for a bit before leaving. Okay no biggie just lmk next time please. Her friend gets back to me a few minutes later and says sorry I couldn't make it to the venue didn't see your fiancé tonight. I asked her why she would say this and she said she didn't know she can't control what her friend says and walked outside. I'm sketched out af by this point. I have never done this but I looked at her phone records, yes I did and don't regret it. I saw that when she went outside she called her friend that had texted me right after she went outside. I also saw an hour long call with a number I didn't know on the way to the venue. I asked her what rental place they went to and multiple other questions. She had quick answers and they seemed legit. I thought maybe I'm crazy here I need to chill and sleep on it. This morning I asked her to please see the text from her friend asking her to pick her up and I would apologize for questioning her the previous night. She said no. I said when I caught up to you yesterday on the way to the venue I saw you were on the phone who was that? She said oh that's the friend I picked up later on. That's when I knew for a fact she was lying. I said I looked at her phone records and knew that wasn't true. She then changed her story to say oh I needed to meet up w a co-worker to discuss a patient. Who is the co-worker and why couldn't you discuss that over the phone? I need to show him the techniques in person his name is Michael? Okay I am sketched out beyond belief at this point we never lie to each other. I asked to see the text with Michael. She said wouldn't let me see. I said why not if there's nothing to hide? Are you having an affair? Do you not want to be together anymore? She pauses and proceeds to tell me all the things that are wrong with me. I work too much I don't spend enough time w her don't listen. I'm astonished at this point all of this is news to me. I put two and two together at this point I know something sketchy is going on. I again asked to see the texts. It took about a half hour of convincing to see these texts and they were crazy. Sexual in nature and talking a lot of shit about me. Also how she wanted to be with him and how they're essentially in love. She started this job 1.5 months ago, he is her co-worker. He is also 15 20 years older and divorced w multiple kids. I have been financially supporting her for the last few months as she got back on her feet and was working extra so she wouldn't have to pick up a part-time job. We own a house which we both live in with three dogs and a horse. Sorry for the novel I am beside myself right now. I did not see this coming and we were going to get married in 4 months, any advice would help. Update, 1. As an update, I was finally able to sit down with her tonight and go over this. Again, she came in trying to blame me for what she did. Trying to justify the cheating and lying as a direct result of my lack of communication and listening. She said she wouldn't have had to start talking to this guy if I had been listening better. I spend too much time in the office working and don't dedicate enough time to her. I tried to explain that I was putting in extra hours to try and support her and the family financially while she was struggling so she wouldn't have to get a part-time job. She said she would have rather gotten a part-time job which makes no sense to me. She was under the impression that because this was short-lived, one week she say, and they only made out once that we could move past this. When I brought up the text where she was trashing me and talking sexual with him she deflected hard and I got nowhere with that. I told her that I'm not the reason that this is happening. She went too far and should have communicated with me or thought about the implications first. That I can never trust her again and this is all because of her actions. Whether she wants to try and justify this as my fault is up to her. At the end of this part it got a bit calmer I said listen we just really need to figure out the house we own jointly and the three dogs. We came to the conclusion that either I stay and buy her out or we sell and get new places. The dogs one of us will get one the other two TBD. So that's where this left off tonight and we'll continue to keep you all posted on progress. Curious what you all would do about the house. Financially I can support it alone but it is nearly 3k square feet and 5 acres of land which was bought solely to have her horse. She is taking the horse when she leaves and boarding it at a barn. Update, 2. Day 3, I was able to sit and have a 3 hour conversation with her tonight. We talked about our relationship and what lead to what occurred. It started with her telling me what I did wrong in our relationship. Lack of communication. Spending too much time working and on my phone. I don't disagree with any of these things. My mindset behind working so much was support of the family. I run an e-commerce business on the side and am a one-man customer service center and deals happen 24 hours a day. I am never not on the clock. I could have certainly been better about setting my phone aside and responding to people the next day. The lack of communication was on both ends and a prime example of this is the fact that I was unaware she was unhappy with any of this. It was never communicated to me. She said she felt I would have gotten upset if she told me but never gave me the chance to work on it. I am not a perfect person by any means and many times I do or say things that are misinterpreted by her as rude. An example of this is a week or two ago I was trying to help her with a budget with her financial problems to try to set up a plan to get her on track. To note I work in the financial industry and do this for clients all the time. She had mentioned that she owed me maybe one dollar, oh 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 and she would get that back to me next paycheck. I said something like I think it's a little bit more than that let's go through the transfers I've made to our joint account. It ended up being over five dollars, oh oh oh. My purpose for doing this was not to make her feel bad but to realize how much I have been contributing. She took this as me trying to humiliate her. Was just trying to help and maybe my timing was off. 
She told me I had been too focused on money lately but I was only trying to make sure we were going to be okay. We still had quite a bit to pay for the wedding and my budgeting mentality was on overload trying to make sure we had enough. The fact that she keeps trying to justify what she did by attributing that as a direct correlation to my flaws really bothers me. She keeps telling me that she is surprised I would throw away 7 years of a relationship away like this. I keep having to remind her that I didn't throw it away she did with her actions. She told me that I told too many people too quickly and we could have resolved all of this between us. She also said that she wouldn't have had to talk to someone else if I was a better listener and communicator. I have finally, determined the extent of the affair which I actually believe based on the texts that I read. They began talking one two weeks before via duck text. I don't know if they had met up before outside of work but this time around he had asked her to the park to play basketball and talk. She met up with him and they ended up making out. I truly believe it didn't go further than this yet. But, it would have in the near future I am sure. She says he is not her boyfriend. She also took off tonight and I have no idea where she is at assuming with him or a girlfriend. It is an awkward living situation but I am hoping this resolves in the near term. I do think she wants me to get back with her and try to repair that. I think that the, the main issue was a lack of communication that manifested for a long time. We got into a routine, lived our boring simple life and meanwhile this problem was never discussed and grew over time. She acted out instead of talking to me and also lied to my face slash talked a lot of shit about me behind my back. She can be very sneaky and I don't think I can fully trust her again. Obviously this would be the easiest thing to do but I don't think I would ever be truly happy. Understanding the root cause has helped me feel better. If nothing else, it will allow me to address my personality flaws slash communication issues and see things from another perspective. I started hitting the gym today and will keep a routine going. I also plan on picking back up on studying for my CFP designation. I took the week off of work to focus on my mental health. Today I called the wedding venue and officially cancelled the date. We were able to get some money back but lost a bit unless the date can be resold to another couple, unlikely. I also spoke with her parents again to keep them apprised. They live far away and I am sure are worried sick. I continue to let them know everything is fine and calm and they don't need to worry about their daughter. I did some research and with interest rates where they are today I will not be able to find a comparable house for the mortgage I pay for this, can barely find an apartment for less nowadays. I think my best option is to try and buy out her share and have her find an apartment. She seems agreeable at this time. We will have an appraiser out to assess value and see what half of the equity would be and if that is doable for me. My questions to you all are, does this change your mind at all about the situation? Am I handling this properly? If not, what should I be doing different? Update 3. It's been nearly a month since this whole situation went down and I owe you all an update. Has been a very busy, emotional and eventful month. So I am not going to lie the few days after this happened to me I was a pathetic mess groveling to get back with this cheating poss. It's embarrassing to admit, but it happened, and it was all part of the process of moving on. While in this vulnerable state I tried everything I could to do things right make things better but nothing worked. I was actually told that she had to make a decision, me or him, and she did the right thing choosing him. I think that's when I woke up and realized I'd let my self-worth go down the drain and I needed to take a step back and really focus on me and what was best for me. It is hard after 7 years of doing everything for someone else, to focus on your own needs but that's exactly what I have been doing since. I moved our joint savings accounts to my individual checking account. I did the math of what was owed to me and transferred half of the balance back to the joint account for her to take. I have been working out every day since this happened. It makes me feel good to not only improve how I look, but helps me continue to think clearly. I've gone suit shopping, for a massage, out with friends and family. Not only was this relationship isolating of my friends and family, which should have been a huge red flag, but I never did anything for myself. Buying clothes is just not something I would do. I was always worried about providing for my sig other and animals. I've been seeing a therapist, for the first time in my life, on a weekly basis. It helps me talk things out in my decision making. It is something I will probably continue to do after this situation resolves just to continue to improve myself. Now for the bigger items, I am still living in the house with the ex. She is sleeping in the guest bedroom and we are at a point where the only communication is did you feed the dogs? I think she is a terrible person and no matter what I say, in her mind, this is my fault. To accuse someone of being a bad communicator and then using that as an excuse to then not communicate her feelings to me and cheat as her being a hypocrite and an easy out in her delusional mind. I stopped bothering trying to reason with her because she is unreasonable. I have been keeping the ball rolling with listing the house for sale. I contacted an agent had them come and was happy with the proposed sale price. She then requests that I contact two other agents and get their opinions, one of which was recommended by her friend. Yes, I made all the calls set up all the appointments and met with these people. This is how the relationship always was and even though it's not fair I've been willing to do it all to get the hell out of here. After meeting with all three we ended up going with the first agent. Pictures were taken on Sunday and the house was listed for sale Sunday night. Open house next Saturday. Already getting a lot of attention on the resites. She will be taking the horse to a barn somewhere TBD. I had a conversation about the dogs and offered to take one or none. She said she would take all three of them to keep them together. They are a happy bunch and I don't want to fight over taking one if that will break them up. It also selfishly allows me to pursue a clean start. Unexpectedly. I met, someone about a week ago that I've been spending quite a bit of time with. I have no false expectations here but am enjoying hanging out with her. She's been through a similar situation in the past and has been helping me through this. It's really eye-opening speaking with a kind, thoughtful and independent woman. It makes me realize what a narcissist my ex was, completely self-centered, dependent and manipulative. 
I should have listened to the warnings from family and friends long ago. I definitely fell into the trap of being in a simple routine. I wasn't enjoying life, it was just an easy situation to be in. Nice house, lots of land, great animals didn't want to rock the boat. So I just continued on. You don't really realize this until you take a step back and truly reflect. Some might say it was wasted time but I am really using this as a learning experience. I will not ignore red flags in the future. I will not fall into the simplicity trap. I will continue to maintain relationships with friends and family. I just want to end this with a huge shout out to everyone on here that commented on my original post. I posted on Reddit because I had no idea what to do. Those of you that took the time to try and help a complete stranger on Reddit are amazing. I read every single comment and they all helped me get to where I am now. I am looking forward to the next chapter in my life, wherever it takes me. Thank you all, truly. Update, 4. Hello all it's been quite some time since I have posted an update on this situation. It's wild to think that all of this happened more than 4 months ago now. With time this has gotten so much better and hopefully if someone stumbles upon this going through the same situation it will help them realize that time heals everything. I shared the house with my ex until mid-May. It was painful being there with her and the dogs knowing that my life as I knew it had ended. We were roommates who didn't like each other. I tried to avoid her as much as I could but it was impossible. We stayed in different bedrooms but the dogs were allowed to roam to and from at night, doors open. After the first few weeks she stopped sleeping out and it didn't happen almost at all for the remainder of the time at the old house. The constant texting and phone calls, however, did not. I think they decided not to pursue a relationship but remained friends. I don't know for sure and didn't care enough to ask. She moved out in mid-May along with two of the three dogs. Saying goodbye to them was awful. The loss I felt could be compared to a loved one dying. During my last month there I met up with the ex and two dogs at a dog park a couple of times. While they recognized me and were happy to see me, I could tell that they were doing just fine without me, which made me feel better. There was little conversation with the ex other than about how the dogs were adjusting. She moved to a run-down house in a run-down area to put it nicely. There was a yard for the dogs but it was not fenced in. The last I heard she was working on finishing the fence. During this time period I hit the gym every single day. I also grinded hard at my side hustle. I knew life was going to get expensive and wanted to prepare myself. In the time period from March June 15th when I moved out, I had done six figures in sales at this side hustle. I also made zero big purchases. This allowed me to save a significant sum in addition to the proceeds from the sale of my old property. Due to this, I was able to comfortably afford a nice house in a nice area with a decent sized yard for the dog that stayed with me. Selling the old house was easy, buying the new house was absolutely brutal. Thankfully, the buyers of my old house allowed me to rent it back from them for a month until 6.15. I made offers on a total of 5 houses and finally got the last offer accepted towards the end of May. It is really nice being out of the old place. The memories associated with that house haunted me every day. Especially after my ex left with the other two dogs, it was just very empty. Moving was a pain but friends and family came in clutch to help with it all. I have now been here a little over a month and it is feeling more like home daily. I am still seeing the same woman, who is now my official girlfriend. I live a bit closer to her now, which is nice. She treats me really well and I am very lucky to have her in my life. She helped me get through this situation and has been very cognizant and accommodating relating to my need for space and my emotional ups and downs. I've never been with someone who communicates so well and it is making me a better communicator myself. My emotional intelligence has also grown significantly. Overall, life is good. While this was one of the hardest things I've had to go through, I feel blessed that it happened. I was going to marry a completely self-centered, ungrateful pos. I was so comfortable with my daily routine and didn't want to disrupt my animals' lives or lose my house, so I was willing to put up with being miserable. I will continue working on myself and learning more about my own wants and needs. I will also continue to provide my dog with the best life possible. I do think about my ex regularly, lots of flashbacks of good and bad memories. My new therapist has been extremely helpful helping me realize that I probably won't ever get the apology from her that I want. She's just too proud to admit what she did was wrong. Communication with my ex has been very limited. I don't plan on seeing her or the other two dogs again. I've accepted that is what is best for everyone. If I missed anything you have questions about please feel free to post a comment and I'll be happy to answer. This situation is over at this point and I won't be making any more posts on the subject. Thanks for following the saga and for all the support through the process.